A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. I'm Yemi. Adebayo. Let me attempt to give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show tonight uh, as I wait Austin to join in so that we can take this trip together. On the show tonight, we'll be talking about uh, the Nigeria Professional Football League. Indeed, it has started. We've seen the first game of the season. It was the Southwest Derby, Real Monsters and MFM. We'll talk about that much later as we move on on the show. We'll also talk about the uh, awards, Motorsports Awards, uh, a new chairman has been elected and with the withdrawal of uh, Mercedes appeal, Red Bull's Max Verstappen is able to enjoy his moment as he collects the award. We'll also talk about the rising number of COVID-19 cases in England, um, of course, disrupting the uh, Premier League matches. We'll listen to managers like Jurgen Klopp, managers like uh, Mikel Arteta and Thomas Tuchel, all talking about um, all talking about the disruption caused by COVID-19. But it does appear all the managers um, do not agree on the approach to be taken. And of course, we'll give you, hopefully on the show, we're going to have a conversation on weightlifting. As somebody lined up, uh, who will be talking to us and shedding more light on the activities of the Weightlifting uh, Federation in Nigeria. So that's the outlook of uh, the show tonight. And it's also a good time to uh, pass the button to Austin and allow him to join in as we uh, as we continue, all right, we'll, we'll get to do that. Let me just quickly get this one out of the way. Let me introduce my partner in the Lagos uh, studio, uh, Ikena. Okay, Chikwendo joins us this lovely Friday. Ikena, I mean, it's good to have you this lovely Friday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I started and um, we saw first upset today, setting the trend of what is to come. So it's good to be here. Happy to be here. And we are going to discuss it all today. Yeah, so that, that's it. We're going to do uh, all of that even as we move on on the show. I guess uh, with the way uh, we're going to start uh, the show tonight, we'll have to start differently um, than we planned. So let's just start with the Nigeria Professional Football League and uh, we'll take it uh, from there. Ikeda has talked about it and... Uh, Let's just start there. Uh, what happened today in the Nigeria Professional Football League and, of course, M MFM in a different venue than what they are used to. Uh, whether or not it was responsible for what happened to them, uh, I cannot really say. But let's give you a confirmation of the results. It's going to come up on your screen. That's it. Uh, of course, Remo Stars going all the way to Oniko and putting two goals past MFM. Um, one can't really say it's a surprise because we didn't really know much about both teams. Yeah. You know, usually in Nigeria Professional Football Leagues, when the season starts, you get to know. We didn't see much of their preseason activities. But I agree with you. You still wouldn't expect Rebel Stars to come to Lagos no. and put two goals past them. They just came up from, <clears throat> from the second division, from the um, uh, NNL. So coming to big, uh, beat MFM here in Lagos is a big deal. Okay, and MFM has been, they are now an established, they are now an established force. Yeah. In the in the NPFL, so between them by not by a long goal, by two goals to nil, that's that's huge. That's a statement. Uh, probably the change of venue, cause it was all going back and forth all, all through today. So maybe you affected, but as the home team, anywhere you play in Lagos, you should be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a huge one, and it it, it, it gives. It, it, I'm happy it happened because it's going to um, give the trend of what is going to come because. Now teams can go away and pick up points and, and, and play with all their hearts and win and win games. So it's good to start the season like this. Really, it's, 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 heart, it's heartwarming. All right, so it's always good to start the season uh, that way. Remo Stars. Um, we have. Uh, all right, so we have some of the name of the scorers, Kudus Akoni, uh, scoring uh, one of uh, the goals for uh, Raymond Stars. All right, uh, so Austin is ready. Uh, greetings, Austin. Another day to take a trip on the money spinning world of sports. So the greetings to you, Yemi, and of course our viewers and Ikena are right there with you in Lagos. It's always a delight to be on the show. So much going on in our world of sports. I'm super excited that a new season of the Nigerian Professional Football League kicked off today. And what a story. Newly promoted Remo Stars stunning MFM right there at the Mobology Johnson Arena by two goals to nothing. And you know what? I was watching that game, by the way. Shout out to Remo Stars 
for providing a live stream link for followers of football in Nigeria, well, not in the country, to follow. And I keep saying that this is the way to go. It's not a big deal. So if Rema can do it, MFM does it, Aimba do the same, Aqua, our football, we will make some remarkable progress because we've seen something like this with Van Reza FC, the NNL, Remo stars are coming from the NNL and they've brought some good innovation into top flight football. So shout out to Remo. They didn't just win on the field today. They also won in terms of doing the right things for football development in Nigeria. So I'm super excited that the league is back. We cannot wait to see more action on Sunday. I mean, yeah, we, we can't, we can't wait. And, um, of course, let's quickly, uh, take a look at some of the fixtures, uh, of course, we're, we're going to go back to the discussion we were supposed to have, where, which is a discussion on weightlifting. Uh, we'll do that. But let's just quickly, since we started with this, let's just end it. And so on Sunday, those uh, waiting for the matches, what you have today is a cotton razor. And of course, what you have on your screen are all the matches that will be played. Aqua United will take on Kano Pillars. You have uh, Heimba will take on Abia Warriors. Gombe United will take on Shooting Stars. Heartland will take on Nasra United. Casina United will take on Rangers. Very interesting fixtures uh, to, to behold. Nine matches to be played on Sunday. Quara United to take on Dakada. Lobby Stars take on uh, Rivers United. Niger Tornadoes uh, will be up against Plutu United. Then Sunshine Stars will be up against Wiki Taurus. All right. Ikena, uh, before we go back to Austin, let me allow you to say 18 or two about the matches uh, to be played. But then again, like I said, you can't really say much until they start playing one or two matches. So this, this, if, if you want to really enjoy the MPFA, this is the time to really sit down and because everybody's coming to play with their hearts. Aqua United versus Kano Pillars, that, that, that would be a very, very interesting game. Kano Pillars are always potential champions, season in, season out. Yeah. They are always there, they, they make the, the good buys. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but they keep trying. They have, mm -hmm. the, they have the pool, they have the, 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 the crowd behind them. So going to the, the defending champions, Aqua United, is going to be a tough task. And Aqua United, they are, they are excited because of what they got mm -hmm. from the largest. The got largest, from, yeah. yeah. They got from the governor. So it's going to be an interesting game. I just want, want to look forward to them. Enyimba versus Sabia Warriors, I don't know whether it will, it will still take place because Enyimba is somehow distracted with what is happening with uh, Ality Had. So, but that is an um, Abia, uh, Nabia Dabi, which I think uh, Enyimba playing at home, they will get, you know, you know, you know I'll call it for Enyimba. <laughs> I'll just call it for Enyimba. So, Lobby Stars Rangers is another good game, not far away. So, Rangers is another team that should be um, trying to, you know, get their ass together for this season. Um, last season, they did well, but not what they, are, they, what they were expected to do. But this season, they are going all out. They, they have been preparing for a while. So um, um, they, 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 they have set the bar for themselves. At least it's either they win the title or make a continental slot. So it's exciting times. We are, we are, one, one thing is sure, we are happy the league is back. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, been, we've been clamoring for it. We've been asking about it all for, for months now. But it's back. So let's sit down and enjoy our local football. It makes us happy. It makes us proud. So... Uh, kudos to the L LMC for start uh, and, the, and the NFL for kicking it off. With what we have, the results we saw today, we know that there are good things to come. All right, good things to come. We'll, we'll get back to this discussion on the Nigeria Professional Football League. Uh, a lot to uh, talk about. Austin, um, let's uh, go ahead and uh, have that conversation we intended to have uh, as we continue to review what the sporting federations in Nigeria are doing, uh, of course, to closely monitor, that's our job, by the way, to closely monitor what they're doing and x-ray uh, their activities so that we can uh, be able to, you know, probably uh, use our own yardstick to say, uh, you promised this, you didn't do it, you promised this, uh, and you eventually did it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and when we were, you know, talking to some of the newly elected and returning presidents of different federations for us who want to have a reason to hold them accountable to understand that they know their roles they know why they are getting into you know uh, the the job so uh we were profiling different federation presidents wanting to know their goals and objectives their vision you know long-term planning also because you find out that a lot of persons get into federations just for the title and they don't do nothing we wanted to do weightlifting at the time, but weightlifting, they were getting ready for 
the International Weightlifting Federation World Championships in Uzbekistan, and it was a serious competition because it serves as qualifiers for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham next year, right in the United Kingdom. So uh, we don't have the president tonight because the president is back to Uzbekistan for the World Congress, but the technical director, Coach Christopher Wadie, if he's ready, is standing by in our studio in Abuja. We want to talk about the development of weightlifting in Nigeria, and we will use the World Championship as a yardstick, I mean, because seven weightlifters represented Nigeria at that one, and the country did, you know, quite well, winning four gold medals and getting silver and bronze here and there. For me, it's not about the winning. It's about weightlifting, getting that steady ride that we wanted to have because we know that they've been going through some bumpy ride in the last four or five years, you know? Let me just tell you the story. The team, Team Nigeria, won nine medals in two different competitions right there in Uzbekistan. I also told you that the IWF World Championship serves as the 2021 Commonwealth Games qualifying uh, championship, and Nigeria won five medals in the Commonwealth Championship and four in the World Championships. Nigeria won a total of four gold and a silver in the Commonwealth Championship and clinched a silver and three bronze medals in the IWF World Championship. But this for me, is the story when we get the technical director talking. What are they doing right now that we're beginning to break records? For instance, Olari Noye at Denike at Dijat broke a 20-year-old jinx, national, uh, 20-year-old national jinx, and she won Nigeria's first medal at the World Championship. And she's young. She also went on to win silver and two silver and two bronze medals also. Uh, four Nigerians, I told you, won gold medals. They are Stella Kingsley, Olari Noye, um, Adenike, Adijat, Lawa Rafiatu for Lashade, and Eze Joy Obone, including Joseph Edidion, who won a silver medal at the World Championship in Uzbekistan. So let's go to our studio in Abuja, Technical Director, Nigeria Weightlifting Federation, uh, Coach Christopher Wadi. It's good to have you join us on Sports Tonight. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very delighted to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much for making our time to join us on the show tonight. Let's let's talk about weightlifting in general in Nigeria. In the last four or five years, it, it's been a bumpy ride for the sports in the country. Is it getting steady now? Well, the truth is that uh, weightlifting has, uh, has been doing very well in the last four or five years, as you put it. But we've not been getting um, adequate uh, publicity. And uh, that is just the problem. Because if you look back, you recall that at the 12th All-African Games in Rabat, Morocco, in 2019, uh, weightlifting contributed a whopping medals, 47 medals, to the Nigerian team by winning 16 gold, 12, 12 silver, and um, 19 bronze medals. Awesome. Let's talk about the just... World Championship uh, in Uzbekistan. It seems to be a good competition for Nigeria. Uh, what's responsible for that performance in Uzbekistan? Yes, what um, really... What really helped us was that, um, thank God for our dynamic president, Dr. Abdul Ibrahim, who, whose support is um, actually priceless. Um, we went ahead to camp early. We had a good preparation close to two months before the championship. As you recall, it's a twin competition. The, and uh, Commonwealth Championship and the IWF World Championship, which is a qualifier for the Commonwealth Games that is scheduled to hold next year in Birmingham. Awesome. Let's quickly talk about the Commonwealth Games now before I hand over to Yemi in Lagos. Um, for the four gold medalists from Uzbekistan, they have already qualified for the Commonwealth Games. What else are we doing to ensure that Nigeria will get a better outing uh, next year, right here in England? Yes. In fact, um, we expect to do very well at the Games. Like the championship we went for, 
you recall that for the women and the men, we have um, 10 categories each, and uh, which is um, we have 10 gold medals in the women and men category. And at this championship, we went with just five women, and out of the 10 gold medals at stake, Nigeria won four out of the 10 medals at stake for the women category. So, but we are going to intensify and build on these um, achievements. There is still another window of qualification um, early next year at the African Championship. So we intend to throw more athletes into those championships so that we'll get more qualification for the Commonwealth Games proper. All right. Uh, thank you, Director. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on the show. This is Yemi from uh, Lagos. Uh, I'm interested in asking you this, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it, it does appear weightlifting people who are maybe uh, in the military or paramilitary are the ones who really take to uh, weightlifting. It's, it's not an all commerce sport. I, I, am I wrong in, in that assessment? Yes, you are. You are very wrong. <laughs> uh, if you look at the athletes that represented Nigeria, even just at this concluded championships, they are youths. Um, very young athletes. They are not um, in the military and all that. One of them even sets a youth world record. Joy is your bunny. Set two uh, world records, one in the clean and jack and one in the total. And these are very young um, athletes. Okay, uh, that, that, that's good to hear. But in, in terms of, you know, the, the um, in, in terms of the sport now, because my, my thinking, and it's good, you, you said that your, your federation has not really received publicity. I guess that's why you are here and you're correcting some of the notions and some of the things that are just out there, like the one uh, you, you just corrected. But what, what are the activities your federation is um, getting into that we ensure that young people like those names you mentioned will also take to the sport? Yes, as we go into our calendar next year, we intend to go host um, youth championships to complement what the Federal Ministry, Ministry of Sports is doing, like we have the uh, National Youth Games. So we want to focus on um, youth development, the youth championships, and um, the junior championships. If you recall, in the last few years, Nigeria won overall at the African Youth Championship in Entebbe, Uganda in 2017, where we won 13 gold medals. Also in Algiers, the African Youth Games, um, Nigerian weightlifting uh, team also contributed um, a lot of gold medals to the team. So we are going to focus on the youth development to complement what we have presently. Coach, let's talk about the long-term goals and objectives of this new board of the Nigeria Weightlifting Federation. What's the major focus for you guys? We have our programs lined up. If you recall, we were not able to go to the Tokyo Olympics because we didn't um, attend um, the required um, number of qualification events being that as it may. So we are looking beyond even the Commonwealth Games that are scheduled to hold next year. Um, we are planning towards the forthcoming uh, uh, Olympic Games that are scheduled to hold in Paris. So we'll be working with these athletes. We'll be building on our achievements from the Commonwealth Games. We'll be looking forward to the African Games. Uh, and ultimately the Olympic Games in 2024 in Paris. Beautiful. Before we go on this quick break, tell me what we don't know about Adija. She broke a 20-year-old national record in Uzbekistan. What should we be expecting from her? Yes, this athlete is young, just like some of our colleagues too in the team. The team mentally, they are young. And um, Adija Tolari, you know, in fact, she missed the gold medal narrowly at, for the World Championship because the athlete who won the gold, uh, eventually, both of them totaled the same thing, a total lift of um, um, 203 kilograms. 
Uh, and um, Adija had made an attempt, her last attempt, to total 205 kilograms. Uh, but she missed that attempt um, narrowly. So the girl who picked the gold from Tunisia, they totaled the same thing. But why that girl took the gold was because she was the one who attempted the weight first. So the possibility of um, Adija to um, imagine world champion in the nearest future is uh, very, very, very sure, very certain. Okay, just stay right there. And if you recall, this, this quick break is put tonight on channels television. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, Coach Wadia, we also tell us what we need to do in terms of discovering and nurturing young talent in weightlifting in Nigeria. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's Sports Tonight on your award-winning sports-loving channels television. We're taking a look at the development of weightlifting in Nigeria, which seems to be having some, you know, good prospects at the moment following the achievements of the Nigerian team at the IWF, the International Weightlifting Federation World Championship in Uzbekistan. Coach Christopher Wadie is the technical director of the Nigeria Weightlifting Federation. He's right there in our studios. In Abuja, coach, let's talk about building, uh, talk about developing the sports back home. I know back in the day, weightlifting used to be something of pride for Nigeria. Then, I don't know whether we went to sleep and then there was a decline. What can we do to get back those glory days? Yes, thank you very much. I promise you that... Um the country is loaded with potentials. Our youths are very strong, naturally. And um, the Federation is looking at how to harness these potentials. And in that respect, we, after our findings, we discovered that over 90% of the states in the country lack the basic um, training equipment for the sports. And um, the Federation is already looking at uh, making these um, equipment um, available to states so that our youths will have access to these um, uh, training equipments. If we can do this, it will go a long way in developing um, the sports at all levels. Awesome. Do we have plans of taking weightlifting to the schools? Yes, definitely. We do. We do. We do. Are we going to do it? Uh, in fact, the program has been on. You recall that um, one of our Olympian um, routes, Ogbe, for even started a program in Ofa. I was one of the pioneer coach of that program, Ofa in Kwara State. In fact, we... Uh, you know, we provided equipment. I was there for about six months, and some coaches are still there now. That um, the equipment was in the school, and um, we have a lot of these children during break and all that they were training. In fact, at that time, one of the students in that school even came, made it to the national national camp in 2018 for the Youth African Games. So we are still collaborating with schools so that we will take these equipments and coaches to school so that we pick them at very tender age. It sounds good. And that's where I'll wrap up this conversation. Thank you so much, Coach. I needed to ask you that question so we can find something to hold you accountable. You know, where we don't see, you know, uh, the, the sort of development that we expect from weightlifting. But for now, thank you so much for speaking to us on the show. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So that's it. Coach Christopher Wadier, Technical Director, Nigeria Weightlifting Federation. I love the story because weightlifting seems to be picking themselves back up because this is one sport. Okay, now, and I'm sure you agree with me when we're going to the Olympics or the Commonwealth Games, weightlifting was that sport that we're sure that if we make it to the finals, we can win medals. Yes. Even, even the Commonwealth Games back, back, back in the days. I'm, I'm so excited to... Um, isn't to the technical director, you know, from, or all, all he explained. Even uh, one of the things that impressed me most was they are going to schools, the grassroots development. That yeah. is awesome. So um, that is that, what I'm seeing is that we have a future now back in weightlifting. So they are taking steps. Hearing him say do, um, all those promises, I'm hearing him make those plans. That is what we, we've been asking for. 
what are your plans laid on the table for us to see and he has done so so i'm impressed with what he has said i'm i'm, I'm excited from uh, for the future so like he corrected um um, um yemi it's not just uh, the parliamentary or ministry men that are involved in weightlifting. Other people are involved, the youth, you know, the people that broke the record, some of them are, are youth from the street. So it's exciting to see what, what is happening in weightlifting. And we hope that this can be extended to other sports. This can be extended to other, other, um, uh, other sports that, that, that already done the election, that are willing to move into the right direction. So it's, it's a wonderful interview. I'm excited. I, I, I want to see what we can do with weightlifting and at least you know, get those. The, we remember the, the 84 Olympics and some of that, uh, some of that we did back in the days. Even um, this uh, last Paralympics, the, the powerlifters, you know, what they are doing is almost similar to what, what we expect uh, our weightlifters to do. So it's exciting. This interview is, is hard lifting. I'm, I'm impressed. Sorry. All right. So um, that's it. And uh, hopefully. You know, it was able to dispel the notion that, um, you know, just people in the paramilitary are the ones, uh, and, well, and that's general view out there, but it's able to dispel that, and it's good to note that you have young people involved in all of that. All right, we need to get back to football now and um, talk about uh, Nigeria Professional Football League. We'll also get to talk about uh, the English Premier League. And uh, I guess we can move on from, for now. We can move on uh, with the Nigeria, uh, move on away from the Nigeria Professional Football League. Uh, if Alfred joins us, maybe, maybe we might allow him to say 10 or 2. But let's move on and take a look at the uh, fixtures for um, Saturday and Sunday. Disrupted fixtures. Uh, most of the fixtures, most of the matches called off. And um, uh, I mean, we have Aston Villa and Burnley, Leeds and Arsenal, the two matches that will go on on Saturday. Let's uh, check out the ones for Sunday. You have Newcastle will take on Manchester City, Wolves will take on Chelsea, Tottenham. Tottenham has not played in about two weeks. Yes. Uh, they'll be taking on uh, Liverpool. All right. Uh, I mean, Austin, let's have your take. Is your hand? You probably heard um, a lot of things, and the managers demanding answers, demanding clarifications here and there. We don't even know what's happening. These matches we're looking at, for one reason or the other, it might be called off. The coaches say they don't understand the criteria for calling off matches. Exactly, I mean, because we, we are in a, in a very delicate state right now in the world because of COVID-19, we're fighting it, and then the Omicron variant popped up, so there's need for everybody to you know, be careful. Um, Brent, Brentford, they've put out this press statement telling their fans that, look, we're going to have new rules as regards how you get into the stadium. Jorgen Klopp has apologized and has told people, look, if you can vaccinate, make sure you go get the, vac uh, the vaccine before you come into the stadium. Everybody needs to do their part in fighting, you know, COVID-19. So uh, even those fixtures that you, that you just read, it's not certain that all of it will happen because uh, officials are still monitoring the situation. And if it doesn't look good for football, it's going to be called off, you know. So, but for the ones that we're going to, you know, see tomorrow and Sunday, we're going to take them because four games have already been called off in the English Premier League. And I just explained to you why. Manchester United and Brighton has also been called off, you know. But we'll go ahead with Aston Villa and Burnley. Uh, Southampton Brentford also called off. Uh, Watford Crystal Palace postponed. Uh, West Ham Norwich City also postponed. You know, uh, but we're going to see Leeds United and Arsenal and some of the matches on Sunday. Let's listen to uh, Jurgen Klopp and get some reactions. We'll come back. He cannot react to this because I'm sure there are lessons in it for the Nigeria Professional Football League. In this moment, what we can expect. Then after this press conference, we have the analyze meeting. They will use old <laughs> um, 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 pictures, obviously. So, I mean, we still don't know what we have, what we can make of that. If we maybe we'll have a little idea about the system, stuff like this. But that's it, uh, pretty much. Because again. We have absolutely no information. That, but it's not about now our preparation for the Tottenham game. That's difficult. But for them, it's difficult as well. I know that. Who wants not to play for two weeks and then all of a sudden you have to play again? That's all not not easy. I just think with all the things we are discussing and we don't know, and as, is there the solution? I don't see it in the moment. But more transpar transparency, I think, would really be helpful.
that St. Jürgen Club preparing for that clash against Tottenham Hotspur and Liverpool enjoyed a 3-1 victory yesterday over Newcastle and uh, two days ago and they will be hoping to you know consolidate on that. It came out before you hear me, you know, calls for um Antonio Conte's you know reaction. I said it two days ago on this show that we also need to learn from what the English Premier League seems to be doing. We shouldn't wait till when there's a disaster before we act. We should be monitoring the situation now so that we make sure safety is top notch. No, no, we, we should. You're, you're, you're very, very right. I, I, I think those are the things because <clears throat> even right now, if you're going to host any event, if you're going to host any tournament, you must outline your COVID measures. What are you going to do to prevent people from contacting the virus? What are you going to make sure that everybody stays COVID um, 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 this compliant. Thing, compliant? So... Um, I think we should learn it. But, but I think the Premier League, if not for greed, they should have cut off the league for now. Give them two weeks. Give them two. I, think, I think everybody's going on a winter break. Why don't they go on a winter break? But the idea of not having a game on the 26th of, and, and on the 1st is, is, is um, very um, horrifying to them. So if you ask me with what is happening, because nobody knows anymore. I think people were on their way to the Leicester game when it was called off. So um, they should take a break, give themselves one week, give themselves two weeks, replan. Let the people that are, that are affected, you know, let them recover from, from, from the, the, this thing. And, you know, the games can continue. But here yeah, now, on the press conference, um, that was yesterday's press conference, the Bradford coach, he was giving out his, his press and when they, they told him in, in the press that four other uh, players are already uh, affected with the, the, the COVID. So it's not a palatable uh, situation in the Premier League now. My advice to them is that they should take a break, take a week off, take two weeks off, then they can recover and come back again. But for us over here, I think um, we, should, we should adhere to all the protocols, all the COVID protocols. Make sure that we, we, uh, people have their vaccines. Make sure that um, you wash your hands. Make sure that you, you wear your face mask before you get into the stadium. So we should take all the precautions now because, like you said, we shouldn't wait until it's, it's disaster. So we should take a cue from that. Even as, as the AFCON is coming up in January, they should also adhere to all these protocols, which yeah. is very, very vital. All right. Very vital. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it right because we have to situate it as it's happening abroad. Let's look at, uh, you know, in our own environment, uh, the things that could happen, uh, especially looking uh, at the AFCON. All right. Let's also talk about uh, a manager whose team has not played football in almost two weeks. Antonio Conte uh, speaking about the uncertainty that uh, COVID now brings to football in England to follow the, the rules. And I think that uh, this is the, mo the most important thing. If uh, there are the rules, for sure the rules uh, have to be the same for uh, all, uh, all the teams. Uh, for, this, uh, for this reason, uh, uh, um, oh, we are ready to, to follow the, the rules and we are ready to, to play. Uh, uh, I think uh, every every single person, uh, every single player, or uh, a single pe person or staff of the people that work in Tottenham or in other clubs, uh, has to take the uh, the decision for uh, for himself. And uh, um, I think uh, uh, I, I, I took my decision. My family took. Uh, uh, their own decision, uh, but uh, um, uh, I can force anyone to uh, to take a, a, a personal decision because I think this is uh, this is not right. <laughs> All right, Antonio Conte uh, talking about that. Uh, why, why we're listening to Antonio Conte? We, we were uh, joking around in the studio, and, and I was saying Antonio Conte appears calm because <laughs> his side has not played football in two weeks, and uh, he's been able to stem the tide of uh, bad results. You know, um, that's just making light of uh, the, the, the situation. COVID is a very serious uh, situation, and yeah, he says, "Look, it's." Personal responsibility. Yes, yes. I, I think all of us should take responsibility. Yeah, I, I think when, when they were going to play that game against friends, I think he made a passionate appeal, not in, in terms of football. He was saying about the family lives, lives that these people have families, they have homes, they will go back to. So football takes a backseat right now. Let's deal with this situation. 
One thing I forgot to mention is that, and which is why I have some issues with, with um, English league, is they don't, they don't always readjust the situation on, on ground. They always stick to what they have been doing. Just Klopp, bend it to suit. So, yeah, Klopp says something. You're going to have, you're still having the officials, you're going to have your um, Carabao Cup, two legs. You're going to have the FA Cup replaced. Why don't you have one leg? Just you know, make 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 this feature just lighter. Make sacrifices. Make sacrifices. Now, um, UEFA can't find a, a, the the end, um, um Tottenham game. They can't find a, a, a space place to yeah. put it. So probably so, uh, so Tottenham must have been. Um, they, they have to sacrifice that, those points. So I think the situation is beyond uh, humanity. Uh, we need all to come together and find a way around it. Let's forget about this greed. Let's forget about football this morning and everything. These are human lives. How can we readjust to the situation? That's the, that's the bottom line. All right. How can we adjust? Uh, another team uh, having issues is, uh, well, all teams are having issues, but the uh, ne next spot of call is uh, Chelsea. They're dropping points um, <laughs> like, like, like it's going out of fashion, Austin. And uh, the manager has been uh, speaking as well. A message from... Um, Conte's, yeah. you know, speech was that we should follow the rules and that they are ready to follow the rules. But for Chelsea, yesterday, I mean, they were held to a 1-1 draw against Everton at Stamford Bridge. And I know Thomas Tuchel doesn't like that result, you know. And he has described what's going on with COVID-19 as a lottery, you know, because this is a disruption. Chelsea, they are now third on the log and they will take on... Wolverhampton Wanderers on Sunday. Let's listen to uh, Thomas Tuchel, who is not so happy. And I know he's because of that result against Everton. Yeah, no more, no more positive results at the moment. That must be a relief for you. Of course. But it, uh, the lottery starts again tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we're happy in the moment that Kai has, uh, has uh, more than only one negative result. So he was back in training and... Let's see. But we we like we, we left Kai out because he, he felt unwell. So we thought it's a high possibility that he may, might be positive. Did a PCR, which was not even needed in my information for the match. So he was he was negative on a flow test, but we left him out of the squad. First day in training <coughs> today. So how far off do you think he is from being able to, to be involved? If you want to have my very honest opinion, uh, we have, uh, again, Shoshinho in doubt for, for Sunday because he's in pain. We have Ruben Loftus-Cheek in doubt because he's in pain. Uh, so do we know that they can travel with us tomorrow? No, we don't. All right, uh, we're close to the finish line uh, on uh, the show. Um, Austin was all smiles. Maybe I said some things he, he, he didn't agree with. But the, the fallout is a newly elected president of the FIA was saying today that, of course, he knows um, the Mercedes guys are not happy, but rules are rules. They should be at that event. And if there's any breach, they're going to get punished. So, uh, like we say, local palace, this is going to be sort of an injury for uh, Mercedes and uh, Lewis Hamilton if it happens that way. And I can't blame them, I mean, because what happened um, in Abu Dhabi still hurts. It's painful the way Mercedes lost it because on that day, Lewis Hamilton was a fantastic driver on the day. I don't want to take anything away from the quality Max Verstappen showed all season. He deserves to be a champion. But Mercedes, they have a right to feel the way they are feeling. And, and you could hear Hamilton saying it to Toto over the radio that this is manipulation, you know? And because... I was also being in the middle as a presenter on this show. Ikena, what do you think? If you were Lewis Hamilton, how would you be feeling now? No, I, I, won't, I won't be in that event. I won't be, I won't be, I won't be caught 100 miles into that event. Even the, like Mercedes withdrew that, that uh, the appeal was because Hamilton told them that he doesn't want to win the eighth title yeah. with that, you know, that on, his, on his record. From the board. From the, so he's, he's bitter, you know, and the award coming just how many days, how many days ago into the, I, I mean, fee, fee for him. Okay, he was he was seated out of out of the title, so he, everybody should understand. If they are not, if he's not in, in okay, so will penalizing him? Why would you penalize? Do you penalize? Be more, pain for, uh, be, be more. No, I'm just saying. I'm uh -huh. just saying. Uh, uh, you know, just we in case. Just sleeping dust lie. 
Let's go to Even the if there are rules breached. Let's, they, 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 <laughs> if I beat the rules first, let's go into the next season. Okay. Everybody, everybody on, the, on a fresh board. All right. So let's forget about this ceremony. If, 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 if it was me, I, would, I wouldn't go. Okay. All right. All right. Ike, I'm speaking his mind there. All right. I guess we have uh, just about a minute to talk about this one. And don't worry. Getting past... Uh, we may not just be able to do that. But maybe we'll leave you with pictures from the Mubodala uh, Championship. Andy Murray defeating Rafael Nadal. That's going to be our parting shot. Uh, first, let me thank you, Kena, for his time on the show. Thank you very, very much. Always a pleasure I'm, I'm, doing this yeah. uh, with you. Uh, from me uh, here in Lagos, uh, of course, it's, it's bye for now. And hopefully, we'll be back here again next week. That was a delight to have you join us to talk sports. Let's do it again. In London, I'm Austin O'Connor, and in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports by for now.